Well, I think that the report is spot on, the requirement to take services that were designed to meet different needs at a different time uh, and to change them uh, so that they're more accurately attuned to meeting the needs of uh, today's group of, uh, of service users. It's the requirement, I think, as Mike Farrer of the uh, NHS Confederation has put it, uh, to design a care system with medical support, a medical adjunct, rather than imagining the system uh, will continue to be as it used to be, uh, a system designed to deliver an episode of care to somebody who's normally healthy. Uh, that's not where the majority demands placed on the system now come from. If we uh, focus on the majority of the uh, services provided by the system, these are, are already and will increasingly be people who uh, have a requirement for care and support and, and help, uh, engaging with them, it's not something you do for them, it's not a form of charity, it's in, in enabling them uh, to get the most out of their lives on a long-term basis. It's a long-term relationship. It's not, an epi it's not a transaction. Uh, and if you uh, interpret the, the requirement that way, working with them to enable them to get the most out of their lives, uh, it needs to be much more community-based. It needs to use modern technology, in a modern communications technology, obviously the clinical technology, but modern communications technology, uh, much more effectively than it does now. And, and rather than waiting for something acute to happen, an acute need to arise, and then intervening and probably taking them into hospital uh, to manage that acute episode, what we should be doing is enabling them to prevent that episode arising in the first place, and as I say, to get the most out of their life, rather than becoming increasingly dependent on a system that will provide emergency intervention, uh, but isn't, is very poor, at avoiding the, in, the need for the intervention arising. The expectations of patients already are changing. One of the things that I think we should uh, recognise is that although once you're in an acute hospital, you probably get high quality care, actually that's a minority of the requirement in the system now. The majority of the system already need these kind of joined up services provided much closer to home and that's a need that the system is bad at to delivering. Uh, and one of the problems we have actually, I think, looking forward is that we're encouraging people and whole communities uh, to, uh, to believe that the system will become better at delivering those joined up services to people in their own home. That families already know are not being delivered well today. Uh, there's a quality issue, there's a financial issue everybody's aware about, but there's actually a quality issue. The core demands being placed on the system are not being well met today. And if we don't design it to meet those needs more effectively, it will go on getting worse at delivering its core purpose. In my mind, the, the prime responsibility lies on the people who crudely sign the checks to the, to the people who deliver the services. We can just go on ticking boxes and sending checks to people who deliver services as they've always been delivered. And if we do that, we're, A, we'll run out of money, and B, people will be hurt. Large numbers of people will be hurt badly. The responsibility rests, therefore, in my mind, on local authorities through the health and well-being boards engaging with the local NHS commissioners to use resources to make it to insist that resources are used by the system in a way that reflects the needs of today's and tomorrow's patients rather than simply paying for a, a way of delivering care that we've inherited from the past.